Welcome back, gang, to the GoGameCox.com preview show. Week eight of the season, South Carolina's five and two and headed into what I think we all knew was going to be the biggest game of the year two months ago. Uh -huh. That, of course, is a lie. None of us thought that the Missouri Tigers would lead the SEC East, but they do, and by two games. South Carolina has now become about the SEC East's last hope to catch the Tigers. South Carolina coming off of a game when they had a chance with Georgia and Florida losing unexpectedly, I would think, Georgia particularly to Vandy. South Carolina really had a chance. Beat Tennessee, you're in great shape. You don't. You're not out of it, but boy, you're behind you missed eight an ball. opportunity against the Volunteers, don't you think? Yeah, it's, it's crazy, uh, Josh. I mean, obviously nothing is over, right. but uh, they have to go to Missouri and win this week if they have any chance right. of pulling this out because Missouri can basically lock up the SEC East with a win right. over South Carolina on Saturday. And as you said, just missed opportunity at Tennessee. It was right there for the taking, and they didn't take it. Right. So now they're going to have to go in and, and really play hard and, and try to get this thing. And, uh, you know, not going to be easy considering that uh, Connor Shaw looks like he's not going to play. Exactly. And South Carolina's advantage over Georgia and Florida is they're the only one of that trio that still has a chance to beat the Tigers. Mm -hmm. You beat Missouri this week, you're only one game behind the Tigers. Missouri's still got to play Texas A&M, still got, you know, half of their SEC schedule to go. So you're not out of it by any stretch, but as you mentioned, got to beat Missouri. And all of a sudden, that's not very easy. Undefeated, ranked number five in the country. You thought when their backup quarterback, or their starting quarterback, James Franklin, went down, they are going to miss a beat. Instead, Matty Mock former Gatorade Ohio Player of the Year, comes in against Florida, really good defense, shreds him. 500 yards total offense, I believe, in that game. And I know Florida is banged up, but their defense, I think, was second, third in the country yeah, absolutely. in yards per game, and they just didn't have a prayer right. against Matty Malk and uh, what Missouri was able to do to it last week. So it's going to be a real interesting Saturday night in the other Columbia. Defensively, the Tigers, they don't have a Jadavian Clowney, but they got two guys in Michael Sam and Coney Ely who rushed the passer very well. Mm -hmm. Similar in a little bit to Arkansas. We come into the Arkansas game. Arkansas led the SEC in sacks. Now it's Missouri. Michael Sam's got seven by himself. Quick pass rushers, which is something that at least in preseason camp, when South Carolina's offensive line was going against their own quick pass rushers, really gave them trouble. I've got to think that that's a matchup that Steve Spurrier doesn't love. Oh, it's a, it's a huge matchup, Josh. I mean, obviously the left tackle and the right tackle have been keeping a pretty good protection on Connor Shaw or Dylan Thompson, as the case may right. be, all year. But I don't know if they face guys of this caliber. Now, they were able to shut down Arkansas right, very effectively. Those guys didn't breathe on a South Carolina quarterback. Right. But it's a different time. They're going to be playing at their house. It's home coming, big TV audience. I mean, there's so many factors going against USC for this particular matchup, but as we all know, factors don't necessarily win games. True. One of them is one you've mentioned already, and it goes back, goes into the pass rush question. Dylan Thompson is going to be the quarterback. Yes. Steve Spurrier has essentially confirmed that. I am not, I guess because Connor Shaw is kind of the bionic man, until we get to Saturday night at <laughs> 7 o'clock and don't see number 14 go out there, I'm not going to 100% believe it's not his game. But right now, everything we have to go on is Dylan Thompson's game. He's a little bit of a sitting target back there for that pass rush, although he has shown at times that he will get the ball out of his hands. He will look at the defense. He will make a throw. Yes. Missouri can pick a few balls off, so you've got to make the right throws. But I think how Dylan Thompson handles that pass rush, handles an environment that i got to think is going to be a lot like Clemson last year, is a huge key Saturday night. Sure, and you know, obviously the thing about it, Josh, is that Dylan Thompson, when you look at him comparing to Connor Shaw, it's the running ability that stands out. Now, Dylan Thompson can run, right. but it's just as a designed run, as a guy that can make something out of nothing, you don't really have that. And he did right. have that big run at Clemson last year, but really that's the only time that he's ever had to run and done something with it. Right. Now, Dylan Thompson, if past history is an indicator, you tell him he's going to start a week ahead of time, he'll go out there and play, play really well. Exactly. That's what he He's done. He's going to have to play stupendously well to get past this pass rush to try to get something going because now the deep, the Missouri defense has an added bonus saying you can probably line up and get against the box this guy. You don't have to play back because he's probably not going to take off running. Right. He's either going to throw or he's going to hand off. It really takes away a big chunk of what South Carolina tries to do offensively. Absolutely. The other injuries you're looking at Kelsey Quarles. They keep talking more and more as the week goes on like he'll be able to play. Spring Ronald Patrick, they think they're going to have him back. Boy, they really want him back. Will they Sports. needed him last week. They, they really did, and particularly a Missouri defensive line that does a lot of things motion-wise. You want a veteran there. Chaz Elder thinks he'll be back, but it's concussion. Even, even if he comes back, he's a freshman who's missed, you know, eight of the last ten days of practice mm -hmm. by the time he gets to the game. He's still probably your starter, but that's a little bit shaky there. 
So I think that injuries beyond Connor Shaw, they are in pretty good shape, but you, you, all of those cards need to fall right for them. You need Quarles, you need Patrick, you really want to have Elder. It's uh, going to be a, you know, basically a crapshoot, Josh. Right. I mean, we all saw last week they were playing without Chaz Elder, already a man down. Then J.J. Marcus gets thrown out on one of the first series of the games. And, yes, I agree, it's a terrible rule, but that's the rule. Right. And so then you have to play with a guy like Chris Moody, T.J. Gurley, and Tennessee basically picked on him Absolutely. on those two touchdown drives. Cannot have that this week, whether Elder plays or not. You've got to have your experience out there, and you've got to have some playmakers because I tell you, Matty Mock's going to throw it all over the right. field. And the the way I look at it, Josh, uh, you, uh, Missouri has receivers 6'4", 6'6", 6'2", 6'3". USC's defensive backs just haven't seen anything like that. Yeah. These are guys that can just go up and flat get the football. Yep. So now it's time. We've told you all about it. Now we're going to tell you who's going to win, or at least who we think is going to win. David, you go first this week. Well, you know, obviously my predictions have been very off the past two weeks. Uh, but uh, the way I look at it, just going out to Missouri and strictly looking at the X's and O's, you throw all the other stuff out the window with the atmosphere and all that, you have a great passing quarterback going against a team that has struggled to defend the pass. You have a USC offense that struggled last week and is now going to be playing probably without its biggest chunk of it in Connor Shaw, which allows Missouri's defense to get another advantage. Mm -hmm. I just have to pick Missouri in this game going to go 35 to 25. I'm almost exactly with you and, and, and with everything you talk about. So many of the matchups are bad for South Carolina. That quick pass rush against Dylan Thompson, who's kind of a sitting target, those big receivers who they will throw to in a South Carolina secondary that has given up a lot of big plays on the road. South Carolina has Mike Davis. You go back to the Clemson formula of last year when Dylan Thompson started. You keep Missouri off the field, you keep the ball with Mike Davis, that gives you a good shot, but I'm just not sure that that's going to be enough. I've got Missouri 28-21. to 21. Both of us thinking right now South Carolina's going to be out of the SEC East race the next time we talk, but we'll see.